Good afternoon again. Uh, I'm going to cut my presentation a little bit short uh, just to give my colleague here, Mitch Asmath, from uh, the Institute of Marine Affairs, uh, just 90 seconds at the end, uh, just to say a little bit about the Institute and what they do. So uh, I'm going to, uh, being a non-traditionalist, um, <laughs> my, my presentation may be a little bit of a different format. So um, I kind of wanted to give an overall perspective of uh, uh, geographic information management in Trinidad and Tobago, because uh, there's a lot of activity going on uh, in different areas across the board, not just in the coastal and marine environment, but also in the terrestrial environment, which I thought ties back in because uh, we're a small island developing state, and if we follow the rich to reef approach, pretty much the entire island is a coastal zone. Um, so I'm not going to go through too many of these bullet points all in one, but essentially uh, there are a few issues uh, surrounding geographic information on the whole. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the decentralization as far as the collection and management of information. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, multiple standards being used or a lack of standards being used. Um, a big one is a lack of clarification as to who actually owns information or data. Um, it's kind of, you know, spread so thin and throughout so many different organizations that no one can really tell you a lot of the times who's actually responsible for the official generation of a piece of information. Uh, that also leads to, you know, multiple versions of information being out there and uh, a little bit of chaos, uh, in a sense. Um, when it comes to data sharing on the whole, very few organizations at this point uh, share information on a more uh, official or rigid platform in terms of there are very few instruments that are used like MOUs or formal agreements or anything like that. Most of the sharing is done on a one-off uh, ad hoc basis. Okay, I'll give you a copy of my information if you ask really nicely. So, uh, as far as uh, collection management and to a certain extent uh, dissemination of information, we have multiple agencies and ministries and organizations doing it across the board. I just put a few of them down here as far as, you know, more coastal and marine information, Institute of Marine Affairs, Ministry of Land and Marine Resources, Environmental Management Authority, Ministry of Energy, so on and so forth. But separate and apart from government, there's a lot of information, especially within the coastal and marine areas, being collected by non-government entities, private sector, NGOs, uh, educational institutions, so on and so forth. And a lot of the times, it's mostly the same case where nobody knows who's doing what and who has what. And there's, again, a lot of duplication in, in efforts and in money being spent for the same information a lot of times. Uh, most of these entities uh, distribute their information, again, like I said, on a one-off basis, uh, where it's essentially, you know, I'll give you a copy. A few of them have started using the idea of, uh, you know, shared system servers uh, and, you know, kind of trying to ensure uh, consistency and dissemination of information. Uh, this was kind of to provide a bit of a snapshot <coughs> as far as uh, who's doing what. Out of that entire list, one of the more important ones is the first one, uh, which is under the Ministry of Planning, there's a National Spatial, Spatial Data Infrastructure Initiative that's going to be taking place, uh, started already, uh, more or less going to be implemented and executed, I'm hoping, by the beginning of next year. That's kind of going to be a game changer as far as who's doing what, how they're doing it, why they're doing it, what they do it for, where it goes, how it's stored, uh, technologies used, standards used, so on and so forth. Um, Hopefully, it's, it's uh, not necessarily going to be the, the answer to everybody's problem, but it's going to at least help answer some questions and problems that people have. <coughs> uh, Stakeholder-wise, the, uh, the biggest producer of spatial information in the country is also the biggest consumer, government, right? Um, but there are other stakeholders. Uh, usually, uh, they kind of are more on a project or sectoral basis that they'll request information. A lot of it comes from... Uh, educational institutions, some of it comes from foreign-based entities who may be doing studies within the country or just need something to complete their holistic picture for the region or whatnot. And some final thoughts. Uh, one of the biggest problems is, is from a governance perspective. Uh, there is a lack of proper management and proper governance as far as it relates to geographic information management systems, whatnot. Uh, because of that, there is no real uh, fall back for most people to say this is the way we should be doing it. Everybody kind of does things in their own way 
And as a result, we just end up with a large quantum of information and you know, spending a lot of time inefficiently trying to sift through it and determine what's what. With that, I'm just going to turn you over really quickly to Hamish Asmat to talk uh, for 60 seconds on the Institute of Marine Affairs and some of the products and data that they can provide. Hamish, you can do it from there. That's fine. Oh, you want to come here? Yeah. Actually, come here. No, Peter wants you to come here. Well, thanks. So yes, so the Institute of Marine Affairs was designated some years ago as the Remote Sensing Center for, CAR for CARICOM. Um, and to fulfill some of the obligations of that, an expand system that directly downloads data from NASA's MODIS and Terra satellites was installed. Um, we processed the data uh, at the IMA to produce a number of terrestrial and marine uh, products. These include vegetation indices such as net primary productivity, normalized difference vegetation index, Leaf area index, enhanced vegetation index, as well as land surface temperature and emissivity, um, chlorophyll, turbidity, sea surface temperature, the latter three being mostly marine oriented, and a variety of spatial resolutions from 250 meters to a kilometer. So we get a, approximately four passes of data uh, every day. Um, the extent is from basically a few hundred kilometers east of Trinidad going up over towards uh, covering Jamaica, as well as fairly far to the west. Um, um, the, 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 pro, the original idea of the, of the system was, in, was to support um, other agencies within Trinidad by providing them this data, and regionally, since the IMA is the regional center. However, we faced a major problem with bandwidth. We just don't ha didn't have the bandwidth to push these products out. Another constraint is that these satellites are actually 10 or 11 years old now, and the next generation of satellites are up there. Um, the SUMI NPP, which we will require an upgrade to get download download the data from these sources, and that's again funding is always a, a problem. So thank you. Okay. Any time and uh, questions.